if anything, I, I was gonna say I, I, I've take, I, I took almost no notes on this book, which is a sign that I really enjoyed it. Uh, mm. <laughs> so it's, it's just, um, it's a real page turner. So I think that's kind of, yeah, it's interesting. You know what else is a page turner? What's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. On today's show, brand new series. We are reading Borderlands, subtitled The Fallen. Who is Fallen? I am actually not sure yet. It might just be literal, uh, literal thing that has fallen out of the sky. <laughs> if that's the case, then I understand what The Fallen is, but... <laughs> Uh, that, that's the case then. Okay, sure. We've seen several people fall. Already. We've seen people fall already yeah, to the ground. Yeah. We There's a ship that goes falls from the sky. I get it if that's the case. If it's if yeah. it's just does what it says on the tin. Yeah. So it's a very literal, very literal sense of how this all works, which is fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Phil's going to be burdens. taking the lead on this one. But before yes. we actually get into the book, I want to talk about the video game Borderlands. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about Borderlands aside from what Wikipedia tells me. I know it exists, and I played Borderlands 3 for 15 minutes before saying, this is not my rodeo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was always that game that, like, you you had to have, your like, your clan of friends who loved playing Borderlands, and you all got together and played it. And I just didn't, I just didn't, I, I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, don't. Yeah. So, uh, so it's, yeah, <laughs> didn't, I don't, don't. have any friends. <laughs> yeah, hmm. multiplayer is uh, th- that's predicated on the idea of there being multiple anything. So it's it's predicated by having multiple friends who are also not middle aged parents. That's a big big part of it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Huge. we'll come back to it. It's always been a beautiful game. Yeah, but, uh, it's got it's got some very gar- gorgeous art. Uh, is the is the naming conventions of some of the enemies in the game a little bit unfortunate? Yeah, it is a little unfortunate. Yeah, it's a it's got that um, edgy. It was vibe. released. Yeah, the first one was released in two thousand nine, which kind of yeah. tells you everything you need to know. Very a, much so. Also, it's a gearbox game, which also tells you what you need to know. Uh, who is? Oh yes, Randy Pitchford, who is just one of the yeah. biggest pieces of shit in the gaming industry. Absolutely, uh, was the founder of one of the founders of Gearbox. So yeah, Borderlands, designed by Matt Armstrong, and uh, a, a cadre of people as the programmers, artists, and writers. It was a uh, it was an Unreal Engine game. And it came out for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in October of 2009. Mm-hmm. And uh, since then was re-released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. So, look at that. It's a first-person shooter. People claim role-playing elements by I'm pressing X to doubt. Just throw in that little <laughs> meme yeah, of, a little. Of, that, of that cop from from L.A. Noir, where you, right. you, you, you throw that in there. Uh, I guess you, there's probably leveling up and stuff like that. But I, I think, yeah, but I, in this day and age, that used to mean, yes, that's a that's RPG. That, yeah. And like, no, nowadays, I don't I don't buy it. No, no. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty standard element to to any style of game these days. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a shooter. There's a lot of spongy folks in the game where you're shooting and shooting and shooting. Uh, yeah, it's it's set in an environment. It's like a futuristic Mad Maxian George Miller type of aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, basically, they looked at anything George Miller had made, including Babe and Babe Pig in the City, and oh, said yeah. that. Did he direct? All, did he also direct Babe Pig in the City, or just Babe Pig just babe. in the City? Who directed that? Uh, p- co-written, produced, oh. and directed by one George Miller. Well, damn. Okay. <laughs> gotta, <laughs> Lord Humongous has got to get in there and have himself some pig. George, George, 
George Miller's career is something that I aspire to. It's beautiful. It's it's I I love that. I love that he can he can. It's like a. Oh, what's his name? I, it's such an easy name. The guy who did Spy Kids after doing like mariachi. Oh, and all Robert that. Rodriguez. Right, then right. Then pivoted you know, to just, Spy Kids. Just the just the worst looking CGI, three D oh, films that you could imagine. Just but terrible. It's wild because George Miller has, ha, as a director, has between two. It's like between two and five years. Mm-hmm. Is he makes something new, right? So you mm-hmm. got Mad Max, Mad Max Two. Twilight Zone, the movie. Right. 1983. Uh, Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. The Witches of Eastwick. Lorenzo's Oil. And then he was not the director of Babe. Oh, I, I kind of assumed that was the only one that he had directed. But No, he, he wrote it and produced it. But he was not the director of Babe. Then... Uh, Babe Pig in the City, he directed. I love and it. then the man's he, the man's multifaceted. Kevin. He, got he contains ha- multitudes. Happy Feet, Happy Feet Two, yep. and then finally, after four years after Happy Feet Two, we get Mad Max Fury Road, and Ugh. then three thousand years of longing in between, with Furiosa being the most mm-hmm. recent release. Why are we talking about George Miller? Because George Miller <laughs> set the aesthetic for everything that this kind of, you know, story is going yeah. forward and forever. Why are, we, why are we talking about George Miller? Because it makes us happy. Because it makes uh, us happy. <laughs> Isn't that enough? George Miller, you know, why not? Beautiful man. Beautiful, Beautiful man. man. He is a handsome man. I don't think God, I knew. God damn. He is. He's, he's got the those great little glasses. It's. It's it's amazing, you know. Oh, George Miller. No, oh, George Miller. Anyway, oh. oh, 79. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that need, whole generation need, is. We're gonna is, need one more good Road Warrior movie out of him, and, and, and yeah. then he can he can shuffle loose. Yeah, at least one more. Yeah, at least one more. I mean, Ridley Scott has got. Oh, have, did you see the trailer for for Romulus? Yes. And so I, I we were talking movies wait. before the show started. Yeah. Uh, Phil got to go see what was that? You got the oh the Quiet the Place. The third Quiet Place movie. Yeah. The Which is pretty third, good. The to complete the thrillage, the Quiet Place trilogy. Right. Uh, <laughs> that nobody asked for. <laughs> no one asked for. But yeah, uh, the Aliens Romulus trailer was like, fuck, yes. It it looks <laughs> great. It looks <laughs> it looks fantastic. And I'm actually going to be able to go see that one uh, when it comes out because uh, it's it's timing well with a uh, with uh, another opportunity to drop my kid off with the oh, fantastic. So that's going to be beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, but that's that enough about either. Borderlands the game. I don't have a whole lot to talk about Borderlands the game yeah. other than it happened. I didn't play it and I played the third one for 15 minutes. So tell us about who wrote the book. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Who wrote the book was uh, John Shirley, friend of the pod. John Shirley, friend of the John pod. John Shirley. Shirley. Damn good to see him. We haven't seen him in a minute. We haven't seen him since Bioshock Rapture. Right. And which actually came out the same year as this. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? That's wild. And John Shirley is, uh, we spoke to him. What year did we speak to him? And was it early 2022 or? I want to say it was 2022. Yeah. It was definitely not last year, but the year before, I think. Okay. Um, Yeah. And uh, John Shirley, for those of you who do not know, is uh, an incredibly prolific writer, not just for hire, uh, 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 but also just his own work. He does a lot of uh, cyberpunk stuff. He kind of rubbed elbows with a lot of like classic genre writers, you know, like uh, he 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 was he's a contemporary of William Gibson and 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 stuff like that. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, But he for our purposes on this show, he also adapted. uh, He's adapted Dune, Constantine, Predator, Alien, uh, Bioshock, the Rapture, which we covered. uh, And he did the first three Borderlands books, this being the first. Um, I think there are more. But uh, he at least did the first three. And he's also a musician. Uh, he, he has he done. He sure is. Yeah. So fascinating guy. Uh, uh, I think his most recent book might have been Stormland, which he sent me a copy of, which was 
really cool. Uh, I need to need to actually read that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> but I'm busy reading Borderlands. Uh, well, so I'm reading Borderlands. Yeah, I have time now. Yeah, there was time. No, he, he's a very cool guy, uh, and it was a lot of fun to, to have on the show and everything, so it's always nice to come back to these guys. Yeah, it was uh, April of 2022. 22, okay, great. So two years and three months ago. Some change, yeah, damn. Okay. <laughs> well, Kevin, what do, you, uh, what do you say we put this body in the marsh, huh? Yeah, let's put it in the marsh, but before we go to the marsh, I just want to oh. go to another... Make, I need to make a pit stop over oh, at, right. at patreon.com slash pixelitpod. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to patreon.com slash pixelitpod, you can join us. You can follow it. For, you just hit that follow button for free. Just make a little Patreon account and hit follow. Boom, you're following. It's basically our blog at this point. You can follow our blog right there, but if you pledge one dollar one dollar a month gets you access to phil's reviews of the books that he reads yeah it's novellas novels short stories whatever he he writes a review of it and he posts it uh right there on the on the blog just Uh, for you just for you five dollars gets you access to the bonus segment which is recorded before the show every week Mm -hmm. and ten dollars gets your name shouted out in the episode so to that end, I want to say thank you so much to Kyle Seaman, Ruthless Mutter, Jesus Loves You, and Friendly Friend, thank you for being a friend. And, oh, there goes Ripley. Yeah, I need my desk, Ripley. <laughs> but uh, now that that's out of the way, now that Patreon has been Patreoned, we've, yes. we've, we've paid our patronage to Patreon. Yeah, let, let, let's do that. I think, yeah. Body in the Marsh. Body in the marsh. The cops are saying he's a cop, so I won't look for the cop. Okay, so we've got Borderlands The Fallen. Opens up with a very brief prologue, um, which is actually the part I, I remember the least about. We get we get to meet uh, McNee, who is this kind of old school uh, uh, mercenary on the on Pandora, which is this just shithole planet. Uh, Wild West, uh, you know, just like we were talking about before, George Miller, Wild West, nihilistic, everyone's killing each other, mutant creatures. If if the uh, if the bandits don't kill you, then the the flora and fauna probably will. Exactly. Uh, along with we basically get a, a quick introduction into this whole world, along with McNee, who is described as like a seasoned mercenary. But in this world, that might mean that he's 32. Uh, you know, <laughs> he talks, we talk Ram he, 20, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, it's they, they age hard on Pandora. I have to believe that. Uh, but he's, he's talking about, you know, needing to get back out and find some, find a score, make some money and, uh, and working with, uh, an old friend of his, uh, 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 Roland, uh, which is a really interesting name for a mercenary. Uh, but Roland, yeah. we, we get the the father son kind of comparison between the two of them. Once again, that probably means Roland is twenty one and and McNee is like thirty. Um, <laughs> so it, it, we basically get a glimpse into the world through this prologue and uh, basically the inc- not inciting incident even just just all right we're gonna go out and let's go get some some swag that we can sell and make some money. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of a uh, it, it's like a it's like a crash course into the world basically. Uh, right for for anybody who didn't play the games uh, like me and Kevin, yeah, mm. Mm. yes. So it cuts to uh, chapter one, which is interesting because it just goes to Roland now. Uh, so uh, it makes me wonder why we needed the prologue at all. Yeah. To be completely honest, it doesn't. It changes perspective, but it's with the same group that we're with here. It's, it's Roland and McKee, McNee, yeah. but it, McNee. but it, it, yeah, McNee, and it, it just flops the perspective between the two of them, and then it's like, oh, you know, uh, actually, Roland is the protagonist. Sorry, I'm yeah. not going to rewrite the prologue though. <laughs> no, yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we get them out on a, uh, what, it's like an out, they call it an outlander, like uh, they're, they're, yeah. uh, they're skiffer, you know, their they're vehicle. Um, 
Uh, McNee uh, complains about uh, not having his shield set up. He hadn't charged it uh, like he should have. Uh, uh, and, uh, and how that's pretty dangerous. So, uh, uh, foreshadowing insert definition of foreshadowing here. Um, basically this chapter, it's kind of a long chapter, but it's, I loved this as an opening chapter because basically what happens here is we get thrown into the action almost immediately. McNeil right. and Roland are out to find some sort of alien technology, anything that they can get to. There's a MacGuffin you know. out there. Yeah, there's, there's, there's Everybody's a looking for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what it, it's alien. Does it matter? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. It's just, you know, everybody wants it. And yeah. basically what we get is this, you know, crash thump introduction into the world and the beasties within. So our heroes are dodging bandits. They're fighting against uh, 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 psycho midgets, which um, okie dokie. One of the, that's the unfortunate name I was referring to. That is a, that is an unfortunate one. Okie doke. I I'm won't sure be they're s- probably still called that in the most recent version of Borderlands. But I've, I would I would assume once again, remember, our, our, our franchise is edgy. Uh, we edgy. Must, edgy with with a with a capital J, J. So, J edgy, edgy. Uh, <laughs> God damn, that's edgy. Uh, uh, you want to be a what was I saw the other day? It was a picture of a pizza cutter. It says you want to be a pizza cutter since you want to be all edge and no point. Uh, ah! <laughs> I thought that was nice. That's uh, a good. That's a good comeback. I would that's say a good that's. One. That, that rate says like a solid 2012 internet yeah, burn. You know? Very much so. Very much so. I like that one. I feel like uh, I could have posted, responded to that, to somebody on Facebook with that. Oh, easily. and it would have, it would have fucking killed. Would have, you would have gotten baby. so many virtual it would have high killed. fives. I would have been high fived, fist bumped, thumbs up. It would have been the, the score from Top Gun would have started playing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it would have, everyone would have been. And, and, and finally I would have showed up and be like, you could ride my tail anytime. And, and scene. And, and scene. uh, <laughs> um, so we get this, uh, we get like a real run and gun kind of a scene that surely writes really well. Uh, as we've said before with these action scenes, uh, if you want to, uh, see the play by play, uh, read the book. Uh, you should probably read the do book. that anyway. Read the book. Um, for our purposes, it is, it's a very cool action scene. We lose McNee. Uh, McNee I, gets his head shredded right the fuck off. Right, right the fuck off. And pretty quickly, uh, yeah. I might add, they didn't, they were like, they were like, oh, did you like this kid? No, fuck him. He's dead. And you remember uh, how his shield wasn't working? Yeah, yeah. This is, this is it. <laughs> we, we just had no patience for the foreshadowing. We set that one. And then we ripped it out of the earth immediately. Oh, McNee, uh, you had a prologue point of view. Yeah. We, you had a we, POV prologue. We hardly we, knew ye. We hardly knew ye. <laughs> and uh, so uh, 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 Roland uh, approaches uh, a group of like professional mercenaries uh, who uh, are working, uh, who he used to work with basically uh, in the past. And uh, we get uh, some background on him and all of them. And they're basically all looking for the same group of ruins slash MacGuffins slash tech. Got to get those uh, MacGuffins. Got to get those MacGuffins. Um, and uh, let's see. So we cut to. Oh, we cut to uh, a ship. What is the name? Homeworld Bound. I I <laughs> love it. <laughs> Uh, we cut to space, space. We cut to space <laughs> outside of Pandora on the home world bound. Uh, we meet the Finn family, uh, the Finn family, Zach, uh, uh, the, uh, the father, Cal, the son and Marla, the wife slash mother. Uh, and basically the gist is they are on, it's kind of like a multi-planet tour. Uh, mm. they're going to ultimately settle at some other planet, but along the way, they're going to, there, there've been a lot of stops basically. Right. And they are above Pandora, which is a, a shithole planet. Uh, but unbeknownst to Cal and Marla, Zach is planning on using their brief four way foray over Pandora to, uh, 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 collect in on some 
underground intel he got that there was uh, some alien artifacts. Down he wants there. So, he, so this guy, Zach, really, he wants that sweet ass MacGuffin. Too. He wants that sweet, sweet MacGuffin. But here's the thing, though, Kevin, it's super easy and there's no risk because he's it, just he's, he's got going, the, the cord quick trip. Yeah. yeah, quick trip. You know, he's he's got the coordinates. All he's he going for a pack do, of smokes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he hits planet. You know, he grabs a, 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 a not even a full MacGuffin, a Mac. You know, he grabs just one of those and then, you know, hightails it back uh, yeah. all in time for them to, you know, have a pint and wait for this whole thing to blow over. Exactly. Uh, it's, Boom, it's done. It's no big thing. And that uh, MacGuffin, that, that Mac, that that Big Mac that he's going to get. Yeah, is yeah. probably generational wealth right there. I, that's yeah, that's just it. All he needs is a little bit, and that's going to be enough to set him and his whole family up for life. You get the impression that he's a bit of a scumbag. Sure, uh, he's not awful. He's not like the worst guy, but but surely just talks. Like if- he talks a lot about how like he's always got some sort of harebrained scheme. You know, yeah, he's he's. Um- I'm trying to think of a TV show character that is always with a harebrained scheme. Yeah. But yeah. I'm blanking for some reason. I'm one of the Honeymooners guys like that. Uh, I have no idea. I never watched the Honeymooners. Uh, but anyway, anyway. harebrained schemes. Harebrained schemes. Uh, uh, the son, by the way, uh, is just, you know, he's a gamer. So obviously Total gamer. He's, he's very out of shape. And, and he's just sitting there on his VR set playing games. And his mother's trying to like be his mom, you know, and like just try to try to try to make this an educational moment. Like so we get this kind of expository moment where she basically pulls up future Wikipedia and she's like, well, right. this is interesting. Pandora, uh, it, it's filled with uh, with monsters. It's uh, filled with terrifying creatures, terrifying creatures, <laughs> not all of which are, are quadrupeds. And uh <laughs> So we learn a little bit about that. We learn about uh, she actually has a background as a xenobiologist, which, OK, uh, yeah. that, that's yeah, she uh, all right. she she's she lights up when she's talking about the fucking monsters on Pandora. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's it. Marlo wanted to get a closer look or, yeah. or it was like from the son's point of view. It, it is like the son is like it seemed like his mother wanted to go down there and get a closer look. Absolutely. She's a scream <laughs> queen. It's yeah. uh, it's really fun. And, and we do. And we do have kind of a, a sweet moment with Cal because he's he is he's just as put off by his mom trying to actively actively involve him in all of this as any kid. I think that at he's a teenager. I don't know if they say sure. specifically how old he is, um, but he's, he's just as put off by it, but, but we do get a lot of information from him. It's like, well, he, he likes his mom and he wants his mom to be happy. So he, he listens half heartedly because if right. he listens, she'll be happy and he likes his mom. Yeah. Uh, it's very sweet. Uh, we get, you know, so she's talking about, <laughs> The prison camps on Pantora and how, well, not all the bandits are cannibals, but a lot of them are. And uh, and you get the impression that the more she's talking about it, the more she's like, oh, I'm kind of glad we're, we're up here then. Uh, yeah. So uh, Zach goes off and finds this kind of skeezy underworld guy that he's got a connection with uh, on the ship uh, and basically gives him like a five grand advance or some damn thing. Yeah, for his name is Rands. Right. Yeah. Very, very George Lucas naming uh, it's, uh, here. It, or, or is it Rons? Is it, does it rhyme with Hans? Oh, I, I was thinking Rons. Rands. Rands in my head. Rands. Think, yeah. Yeah. But it's just another one scumbag and another scumbag chat. And, uh, and he gives him the coordinates uh, for the planet. And basically, so Zach kind of runs down to these drop ships that are like, they have enough fuel for a, a shoot down, a shoot up. And uh, they're, they're, you just put in the coordinates and they just kind of go. They're like these automatic things. Yeah, it'll be easy. It'll be simple, except he sees a little drone kind of following him. Uh, mm-hmm. And he doesn't know what that's all about. And he knows even less when the drone hops into the drop ship with him and starts fucking with the equipment and just like sabotaging everything. Uh, uh, and, uh, and before you know it, he's free fallen, uh, down to this planet, uh, in a, in a drop ship that he cannot control. Uh, and, uh, he, he tries calling, uh, his wife from it basically 
telling her I fucked up. Uh, here are my coordinates, uh, which he almost <laughs> please imme- save me. <laughs> please save me. And he almost immediately regrets it because he's like, oh, fuck. If someone was listening in. They, they've got they they, have the now coordinates they now. She, now they yeah. know where. Yeah. So um, after that happens, Marla and, and Cal get their own adventure as more drones start flying through the ship and just fucking shit up. Just, just blowing, blowing everything it up. up. Yeah. No rhyme or reason. There's no there's no explanation. Uh, it's just the, the, the ship is being sabotaged. And so they find their way down to, uh, life vessels, um, that are one person, like coffins, basically they're, they're yeah. flying coffins, uh, room for one person in each. Um, so she assures Cal that she'll find him. Uh, they, they both stuff themselves inside. It's basically of, like the hell diver pod. That's from, exactly it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. from, uh, what's it? And also, yeah, yeah, from, from Halo, from, from Halo, yeah, yeah. It's it's it, that's exactly it. It's 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 a bullet, and uh, you know, and that's getting fucked up. And they plummet uh, towards the Earth, and the yeah. uh, the zero G's or the the G's just totally knock her out. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's chapter one. It's a beefy chapter. It's a beefy chapter. It's longer than the rest of these chapters, but uh, it's just, it's just. So, yeah, the recap after chapter one, McNee is dead. Mm -hmm. Uh, Roland is figuring shit out on planet side. Yep. Uh, Zach uh, missing in action. Uh, Marla missing in action. And Cal missing in action. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and I will say it proves that John Shirley knows what franchise he's working within. It, it he, sure does. You know, we've, we've read a lot of books on this show that are based on high octane action adventure kind of things where there's a lot of people sitting around talking. Right. Uh, uh, and we'll get an action. You'll you'll get an action scene when I say so. And uh, but Shirley goes, no, fuck that. We're going to we're going to kill off this guy that I introduced you in the prologue. Just introduced gonna, him. Doesn't matter. Yeah, kill him. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to blow up this ship. We're going to send everyone to the hell planet. Sabotage and and subterfuge and explosions. And I hope you I heard you kids liked Borderlands. So I put Borderlands inside your Borderlands. <laughs> you know, like he knows what he's writing. You know, I, I, I got to give it to him. I was, I yeah. was hooked. I was hooked from this chapter. I was like, okay, this is, this is going to work. This is going to work out fine. Um, so chapter two opens with Zach kind of, uh, crawling out of the wreckage of his, uh, drop ship. He has destroyed the drone that was in there, uh, uh, fucking shit up, but that it just, it's just left him basically, you know, he has no idea where he is. He's on Pandora. He believes that he's seen an explosion in the atmosphere, suggesting very heavily uh, that the homeward bound has uh, has uh, uh, destroyed, had, has been destroyed along with his wife and kid, uh, as far as he can tell. And to his credit, he uh, he's not a complete and utter scumbag. He does. He does. uh, uh really give himself a hard time over like, yeah, he, he blames himself on this one. Uh, even though yeah. this is clearly bigger than him. This, this, this yeah. had, this was he less thinks, to do. He with thinks that. it's possibly him transmitting the coordinates is what triggered the something right. or right. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, as he is, uh, trying to figure, he's basically like trying to pump himself up. Uh, it's a Chevy chase. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy kind of moment. Uh, and he is attacked by Skaggs, uh, which great name. Uh, yeah. if you're going to, if you're going to name like basically Skaggs act as this planet's coyote. Uh, there's these like mutant quadrupeds with like a three hinged mouth and, uh, and just, just, just nasty, nasty characters. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you, I, 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 I haven't played Borderlands, but I, I bet you money that if I uh, if I went ahead and played it, I would I would run into some, some skags pretty quick. That's what it feels like. Anyway, it looks yeah, they look like they're just like and they got they got mouths that go like whop. Um, right. Yeah. 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 Just big predator style kind of kind of thing. Um, so in keeping with our theme of uh, out of the frying pan into the fire. Uh, He is trying to kind of run from these things, trying to figure out how he's going to survive it because there was supposed to be a gun in the drop ship, but no gun. Uh, So he's kind of fucked. And 
<laughs> as he is trying to avoid uh, the skag, suddenly uh, uh, they are approached by a group of masked men who uh, take care of the skags. Basically, I thought I thought the skags were going to break out into a song. Wait, what? Lido, whoa! <laughs> you know, Boz, Boz, Boz Skags. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I. I, I think that reference might not be a <laughs> might go over the heads of some of our audience. It's you mean it's l- talking about Lido Shuffle by Boz Skaggs is mm. not topical. It's I don't know why I even bring that up because it's never stopped us before. <laughs> what the fuck difference does it make? We t- that's the thing. That's the thing I pride myself on in this show, Kevin, is that since we started, we have never stopped ourselves from talking about anything that we wanted to. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Kat from Pixel a Day? She recommended us saying that we were a podcast that complained about Ronald Reagan and occasionally it's, talked about video this game This podcast adaptations. is two dads complaining about <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Yeah. We're occasionally talking about video game adaptations. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, so uh, fuck it. You know, I so don't don't listen to a word I said. Fuck it. Uh, uh, you you keep on you keep on shining, you crazy diamond. Uh, <laughs> that's that's my old man reference for the day. Uh, so we get the bandits who are now uh, sizing them up, and it becomes very clear uh, that uh, they are not there to save anybody and uh and uh and and they they they're pretty much sick of eating skag meat so uh some some long pig sounds very good right about now <laughs> and just when you think that uh Zach's luck has completely run out suddenly one of the bandits head erupts into like this burst of acidic blue goo yeah uh which what the shit good body horror right there when real good when this guy uh gets hit with some blue goo and starts to fucking melt <laughs> absolutely absolutely just nasty shit and uh and he finds that this giant spider thing uh is spitting blue goo at them and they call it a drifter uh and it's a nasty character a nasty customer and uh and <laughs> And it's accompanied by what can only be described as the Borderlands version of the there's gold in them hills yeah, kind of a character. This guy, this guy reads us as a prospector. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly, yes. And, <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. And he, he introduces his his trained uh, uh, drifter uh, as busy. Uh, which <laughs> adorable and, uh, and introduces himself as Burl and he seems actually friendly. So you we going to go somewhere, Buster. I don't think so. No weapon, no water, no shelter. Yeah. I seen that little space tube of yours crash. I know what's up. You're prospecting just like I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and that is true. And he does say that it's like, Zach, gets kind of this horrible look into his future. <laughs> it's like, Oh, yeah, I remember when I accidentally crash landed on this. That was years ago. And now here I am. I'm doing here great. Here I am. And I got my suspenders and my hat yeah, and my he's, little pickaxe. He's everything you expect him to be and more. He's my favorite <laughs> character in the book so far. I love him. Uh, His name is Burl. Like, Burl. Burl and yeah. Busy. Burl and Busy. Uh, I love him. Uh, he is he is wearing a, an unusual, like, necklace that Zach notices it's it's got these strange crystals on it and Zach being ever the opportunistic scumbag suspects that maybe uh these are some alien artifacts they're nothing nothing like the a common there are common alien artifacts uh nothing like the ones that he's researched these are very different and he's hoping that you can you can tell already his gears are turned and he's trying to figure out how he can score these this necklace um but for the moment he recognizes, thankfully, uh, that uh, he has he has found a friend somehow, uh, and uh, and he and he follows him. Basically, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna figure he's gonna he's gonna learn him something about the old wastes. Uh, so we cut to the old mo- wastes. There's there's <laughs> MacGuffins in them there hills. That's exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm sure if we keep going, we'll find a MacGuffin or two. <laughs> How long until a game actually introduces 
uh, quest goals that are just called MacGuffins. Like that's your <laughs> thing. There's a, there's a, Someone there's must a, have done it. There's a there's a lost ark or a holy grail in the mountain somewhere. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe three. I don't know. I I'm got burled. some. T- I'm barreled. I got some top <laughs> men waiting for these things. Top men. <laughs> Top man. Top man. <laughs> so that's Busy and Burl. They are the greatest. I would I would die for Busy and Burl. Uh, uh, love them. Uh, so we cut to Marla, uh, who is having a, a, a somewhat different uh, uh, go of it. Uh, she has also encountered some bandits who have found her uh, lifeboat. Uh, they can't get it open. She will not open it. Uh, uh and uh, they are carrying her away, though. And uh, these ones uh, are not interested in hmm, how to put this. They're not interested in eating her. They're interested in eating her. Eating her. Eating her. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're, they're going to sell her into sex slavery. Uh, yeah, they're very into the to. they're like, oh, it's a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, 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 that's very much their attitude on this one. And she doesn't look like a horrible mutant freak. I guess you get the impression that the the other girls in town don't look so good. Um, so you've got this team of uh, 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 bandits who are taking her away. Uh, and uh, and she attempts to, like, make a call from inside the uh, the uh, the thing. It doesn't work. And uh, and the chapter ends with her wondering uh, if her son was alive or if she's, you know, what's going to happen to her. So it's kind yeah. of left up in the air there. So we cut to chapter three and uh, well, her son's alive uh, for now. Cal is alive for now. Cal is alive and he's in his lifeboat, which is on fire. Um, yeah. Which honestly, uh, probably a better situation than his parents had. Uh, Cause you can get away from a fire. Uh, in theory, uh, his, <laughs> his, his first grand, uh, uh, a gesture as a man outside of video games comes, uh, when he has to basically talk the, uh, AI into opening up so he can be let out. Uh, he, he scrambles out and, and realizes he has no idea where he is. Basically the same thing everyone else is dealing with. Where am I? How am I going to survive? How does this work? Um, so he's trying to figure out where, like, just what what direction he should go in. And he ends up getting uh, attacked by a spider ant, uh, which is like, I think they call it a fusion of like a bug and a scorpion, basically. Uh, but huge because yeah. everything's huge. It's not just everything's a- huge. It's we're in we're in Australia here. Yeah, so. we're, exactly. Think of it that way. And uh, he starts running from it. And what does he find around the corner? But some skags. Uh, so he's also dealing with these horrible mutant coyotes. But he shows some ingenuity and he basically kind of runs in a serpentine fashion and makes it so that serpentine the, serpentine. And so the, the skags who are coming at him from one angle run into the, uh, uh, the I almost called an ant lion, which is a real thing, uh, spider ant, uh, and, <laughs> and he basically pawns them off on each other. They fight each other instead of worrying about him anymore. Yeah. Um, so he, we, we get, uh, he, he gets a moment of feeling pretty clever, but there's a lot of inner monologue about, uh, about basically, uh, Jesus Christ, I, I, I'm going to die. Like, yeah. <laughs> so why, why didn't I learn anything other than how to do a cheat code on my VR headset? <laughs> um, and he knows that night is coming uh, and he's not sure how he's going to make it through. It's going to be a tough one, but yeah. not as tough or uh, as, as, as listening to Silk Degrees, uh, the 2023 remaster of the Boss Gags album. I mean, that's just, that's smooth is what that is. That's, that's just smooth. That's smooth. That's yeah. not going to be rough. Not rough at all. Not if rough only he all. had that to help him get through the night. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> we cut to. Uh, I'm really uh, working. I'm, I'm, I'm honing my Boss Gags. I'm going to keep honing my Boss Gags references on the fly. Uh, for these few episodes, because I'm sure that we're going to the word skags is going to keep popping up. And I'm oh, gonna yeah, have, it doesn't stop. We're I, not done. I got to we're not done. And I got to have something no. to say about yeah. 
our man, Bob Skaggs, Bob Skaggs uh, who uh, was in the Steve Miller band at one point. That's right. Oh, fuck, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. yeah, we, we, uh, all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us know if, uh, if, uh, if you would like to learn more about Boz Gags, write us and we will make sure uh, that we have a bonus on the Patreon uh, a bonus <laughs> tier specifically for all of you Boz Gags and Steve Miller band uh, fanatics out there. I think they're called Skagsniacs. Skagsniacs. Of course they are. Why wouldn't Sk- they be? Sk- Skag- Skagiacs. Skag- Skagnatics. Skagnatics. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there it is. Done. Um, we cut to Zach and Burl. Uh, basically, Burl's giving him a lowdown on on where he is, what he's doing. Zach, you're in hell. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty. Like, no, I don't think that your wife and kid survived. In fact, it would be kind of preposterous if they did. Where do you think you are? A novel? Uh, <laughs> I put the odds of those, them surviving as uh, slimmer than a skag's teeth. Yeah. <laughs> It's it really is that scene. It really is that. <laughs> it's basically that where he's like, he's like, yeah, no, I didn't see anybody. Uh, hey, hey. Hey. Oh, there she is. Hello. Now, both the kids have made have made appearances on the show today. <laughs> hey, kid. Hello. She's saying hi. Mm. Yeah, you get she got she got a uh, different color braces now. Oh. <laughs> Got the blue Very ones nice. in there. I was about to say they match. It looks good. Yeah, they match the hair now. Very nice. Yeah. How long do you have to wear braces these days? Well, I feel like it's it's probably another year or so. Okay. Um, okay. And there's some I, other. I immediately just ran up here because I heard you say you're in hell. I mean, that's just yeah, like I know who he's talking to. I know who he's talking to. All right. <laughs> Well, it's good to know that she has a call sign. So we yeah. just need to shout, you're in hell, and she will appear. Do you remember a, one of her earlier appearances on the show where what did something she, about, sacrifice the human babies or something yeah. like that? Sacrifice human babies. <laughs> I think that was one of the FNAF books. <laughs> yes, it might have been. It was perfect. So perfect. Uh, oh so where are we? Uh, okay, oh, we're, so, we're talking to the pros- prospector, aren't we? Prospector, yeah. So basically, there they, we get a little, he gets a little insight into where he is and uh, there's gonna be no uh, fun for you here, boy. Uh, uh, so he's trying to, um, like, basically, Burl is making friends, but he's also keeping him at arm's length at the same time, uh, out of self, you know, you know, probably because any friends he's made don't live very long, uh, right? <laughs> uh, but also because he doesn't know if he can trust him, which is good instincts because I don't think he can, um, no. yeah. So it, we cut to uh, uh, Marla. She has uh, she's back in. She's still in her in her lifeboat. Uh, they've kind of settled down for the evening, and uh, she hears the bandits outside singing a song. And I would like to uh, recite the lyrics for you uh, right now because it's a masterpiece. Go for uh, it. Oh, I've got a very good friend. A very good friend he'll be. He's my best friend now. For I've run out of meat. He's got strong legs, does he, and fine strong arms too. Got fine good meat upon him, so go f- real fine in a stew. For I've run right out of food, and he's looking good, awfully good, mighty good to eat. <laughs> to eat. <laughs> Is, is this like a barbershop quartet song? I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got a very good friend <laughs> to, eat. to eat. And the, 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 you know, shaking the hats. And right. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. It, it does. It does give psychopathic uh, barbershop quartet. A bum, uh, bum, bum. He's a good friend to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so she hears that delightful song, uh, give, giving her an idea of what uh, what's on the menu. Uh, and uh, these guys playing cards, they're playing games, and uh, she hears them. Because she's trying to decide if she should, like, risk opening the lifeboat. And so she's, li- like, listening. She doesn't want anyone to, she wants them to stay good and forgetful of her. 
And so she's listening and she hears all that. And then she hears them fighting amongst themselves, someone getting shot, at least one person getting shot and everyone laughing and going about their lives and decides, well, maybe I'll wait until they're asleep, um, which is it's a good call. It's a good call. So it's a good call. <laughs> it's a good call. Uh, let's see. She uh, she like basically in the middle of the night uh, waits until uh, they've all fallen into a drunken drug induced stupor. I can only imagine and talks to the computer, talks to the computer says, please open the hatch and do it quietly, uh, which, uh, you know, it does. It, it does, which is well, that's 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 what AI is for right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one so, very specific point. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just just this one thing. Interpret my needs of you opening this very quietly. Everything else can go to fucking hell. Stop. Yeah. Stop basing your shit on me. Uh, yep. uh, I haven't looked at that website, but I have to. Did you have any? That, you'd, oh, you didn't. I have to I, assume. I didn't get any videos scraped. Uh, uh, so for those of you who don't know, Ugh. came out that a bunch of the AI training models scraped YouTube videos without the creator's permission. And uh, the only person I know that had their videos scraped was uh, Hot Cider. Actually, oh, okay. no. Uh, Scott Nicewander had like 30 of his videos. <gasps> That's taken. right. He made, a, yeah. he made a video of it. Yeah. 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 But Hot Cider uh, got a few of his videos nabbed and pulled into the algorithm. So mm. wild stuff. Fucking insanity. Stop doing yeah. this shit. You put, make, put it towards making it so that we don't have to work anymore. Yeah. Like, not, not, not stuff we like doing. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so Marla uh, uh, sneaking her way out and she is quickly intercepted by a great big brawny guy by the name of Vance. Vance, another pretty solid character. Uh, in this book as we're going to find yeah, out. Yeah, as as much as possible, Vance is is a solid character. Pretty cool. Pretty cool so so far. <laughs> I say that now. I've only read a third of this book. I say that now. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to chapter four. So Cal is uh he's wandering uh the desert wasteland. He's starving to death. He's thirsty as all get out. And he basically ends up finding this campsite um, with a great big dude asleep and he's got like a, uh, he's got like a bag next to him. So he decides he's going to sneak up and try to rifle through the bag, see if he's got any food or a weapon or something like that. And of course, immediately the guy wakes up, grabs him by the throat and demands to know, uh, who, who he is. Who uh, are you? Who are you? Uh, swear just imagine that, that scene where, where Batman says, swear to me. Yeah, that's that exactly it's, it. Yeah. It's the little kid. <laughs> he gives the night goggles to <laughs> that little that kid who grows. Amazing. The little kid who grows up to be Joffrey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be a way better movie. Yeah, uh, and I liked the original. Well, yeah, yeah. It was the same actor. The yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. no. It's I mean, but like if that was a prequel, that's yeah. how it happened. He, he got yeah. traumatized and became a piece of shit. Traumatized, sent back into the past, and right. oh, well. uh, became became a king. We could, we could, we'll, we'll, we'll work, we'll iron out the details. We'll iron out the details. I, We're writers, I know Kevin. That, yeah, the WGA will be knocking on our door any moment now. No time flat, mostly with a cease and desist. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, cuts t- back to Marla, who is, um, who is being accosted by these, these bandits. Uh, we get a, a lowdown on the words that are on one of their Ta- like this guy's covering tattoos and we get uh, we get like the the words that I, I don't know how to how to put this the stuff that is written on him we get we find out what it is uh, and it's not even like it's not even like they describe the tattoos we just find out that his tattoos say things like rip up and rip off die slow die fast but die call me for quick fucks <laughs> mama may I <laughs> and first the knife which look, call me for quick fucks. We're all gonna get that tattoo. That's the pixel it tattoo as That's, of now. That that sure is. But um, so basically, uh, Vance uh, <laughs> pulls the uh, 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 you know, don't uh, basically kind of protects her from yeah, these don't, guys. Don't touch the lady. 
don't touch the merchandise more like uh, uh, he's, he's, he's nice, but at the same time, it really, he's, he, cause they're all trying to talk him into letting them, you know, assault her. And, yeah. uh, and he's like, no, you're not going to do that. You know, this is, this is, it's, it's not out of any human decency really so much as it, it's, it's like, we, we got to, yeah. we, we're going to get top dollar for it. Yeah. We get, and we get his full name is, is Vance Sletch. <laughs> oh, that's right. What a great last name. Sletch. I'm Van Sletch and proud of it. Wanted on seven planets. <laughs> I, I kill when I have to, and I don't like raping. <laughs> yeah, which, you know what? That that basically makes him a saint on this That planet. makes him a saint in, in this story feminist. so far. Proud, yeah. proud ally and feminist, uh, yes. Van Sletch. Yeah. Uh, Sletch sounds like something awful that happens to the body after sex. I don't know what it, <laughs> Oh, that was after, great, baby. Gotta after go, gotta... mating, the human goes into the sletching period. <laughs> oh, that was that was amazing, sweetie. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and sletch. Uh... <laughs> oh God! So must uh, sletch. <laughs> they must go. sletch out the Santorum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's still a thing. Fuck that guy. <laughs> um. We do, we get, uh, he basically tells her what she's in for, that they are taking her, uh, uh, to the, to the shore essentially to get her sold off, uh, into a sex cult ring. Um, he calls her woman and she informs him that woman is her gender, not her name. Uh, uh, all right. We stand a feminist icon, sure. uh, right on. And, uh. <laughs> And he's like, whatever, uh, Marla sounds good. I don't care. Uh, and she basically lies to him and tries to, uh, tries to suggest that she's rich. She's got a rich right. family and the money you'll make from selling me back to my family is going to be way more than you'd get, uh, uh, for, uh, you know, trying to sell me up the river. Uh, and he's, and, uh, at first it, she feels kind of like, you know, she did, she, like, he, he might be buying it, but by the end of the conversation, it makes a point of saying that basically, uh, she gets the impression that she failed her charisma role on yeah. this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Well, you might be overvaluing yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> He's not all that impressed. <laughs> um, so, uh, we cut back to Cal who has met Roland basically. And Roland is, um, Describes described from Cal's point of view as a big black man. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> big black man, uh, uh, and <laughs> and he basically. Uh, I, I guess it's because he's down a partner now. McNee is dead, and so he's like, ah, I'll be nice to the kid. He he kind of like. I don't know if I would go so far as to suggest that he's taking him under his wing just yet. Right. Uh, but he, but he understands what it means that this kid is out here starving to death and looking for food. Right. Uh, so he also basically tells him like, you know, he, he gives him like some rations or something as he, uh, yeah. and, and you know, kind of trying to get him, get him, And he gets him up to speed on where he is, go, what's going on. We learn a little more about Roland that he used to work for, uh, the Crimson Lances, which is the mercenary group, uh, led by a guy named Cranigan. I skipped that. I should have talked about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Cranigan, the guy that they were talking to earlier. Exactly. He's kind of our big bad, uh, yeah. at this point. So we learn about them and, and, uh, where he is and basically says, Hey, I'm on my way, uh, to this, this, you know, area, this settlement. And if your parents, if either of them landed anywhere near you, uh, the odds are they're going to get back to this settlement, uh, uh, Firestone. And, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're going to get back to this place at some point. So this is probably your best bet. So why don't you come with me? Right. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, it ends on a note of, Basically, what choice do I have? Yeah. Uh, so Cal and Roland uh, hook up. No, not like that. Uh, not like they, that. They're 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 together at last. No, not like that. Not uh, like that. They're they, they're they're partners. No. Anyway, they are uh, acquaintances. Acquaintances in this here desert. So, by way of penis. By way. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That was it. That was what I meant to say. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything about docking, Cal? Um, 
We're going to need oh, to initiate is... the docking procedure. Yeah, I was like, Jesus, this is a very different book from what I expected. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so uh, chapter five opens with uh, Zach basically uh, being threatened by Burl uh, with a shotgun yeah, because, because he caught Zach him going is, through his shit. Zach, what the fuck? Come on, man. Just like... Dude. Burl already told you that he doesn't. He's like, I don't think I can trust falling asleep around you. Right. Uh, yes. Does anyway. And then is immediately justified in not trusting him in the first place. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's immediately. He is a piece of shit. Um, and uh, it's like, he kind of, in, in this section, he kind of goes back and forth between being a complete and utter piece of shit to like, oh, he really is sad about his his wife and kid, uh, yeah. but he's a piece of shit. Um, so Burl suspects that, what is it he's, he thinks he's after? It's uh, his his uh, shock crystals, his stash of shock crystals. He yeah. says, I know you're after my stash of shock crystals. And, uh, <laughs> and you can just imagine uh, uh, Zach kind of like blinking and being like, I have, I, I do not know what those are. Uh, <laughs> What's going on here? I have what no is idea. Happening. Yeah. So, um, Basically, we uh, let's see, we get blah, 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 jump oh, over man. to Marla. Yeah, we cut over to Marla, uh, who is now uh, she's woken up in like she wonders if they drugged her or whatever. Like then she's not sure where she is or how she got there. Uh, she's basically on a houseboat uh, out, yeah. in the, which is which is pretty cool, because I never thought about this in terms of having any bodies of water. I, I doubt it'd be a good idea to to. Uh, you know, swim in it, but uh, it's interesting nonetheless. Um, she's been given like uh, some uh, some water to wash up in, and so she kind of scrubs herself down. And while she's doing that, uh, this great big guy named Grunge, who is more beard than man, it appears. <laughs> like the way she describes his like beard goes like all the way up into like under his eyeballs, basically. <laughs> And uh, he's the leader. They've mentioned grunge before. Right. And uh, and and he's just kind of assessing her naked body. But she but kind of like I said before, she distinctly (laughs) feels like it isn't like he wants to fuck her. But like, yeah, it's like it's like very distinctly noted that it's like something about it isn't sexual. It's just like. He just walks in and it's like, oh, yeah, that's uh, sell. OK. And and then she like talks back to him and he just he's just backhands her while yeah. she t- and he continues with his thing. And he's, like, <laughs> yeah. he's like assessing her and it's like and he calls her it, Missy Ho and she mm, says, don't call me that. And he don't just, call me that. <laughs> and he backhands her. Yeah. And then it's just like, uh, yeah, it, it's 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 interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and Vance is like, Hey, can I buy her? And he, and grunge is like, no. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> not. So, they, but, so, but we do get, we get a glimpse into Vance actually being very intrigued by her, uh, and, to the point of wanting to buy her, not, not, not just to sleep with her, but to like own her, which yeah. is, uh, as honest as it gets in this world. Uh, so whatever. Yeah, it is St. Vance, St. Vance, <laughs> all hail St. Vance, uh, just oh, right up there. Yeah. And, uh, so we do get a funny moment where <laughs> she, she hears grunge talking about how he's got a little guest in his cabin. And she wonders if that's like her son. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he's like, Oh no, it's one of the bandits. He likes he like, he, he like steals bandits away and he'll like, it's very heavily implied that he fucks them and tortures them and, and yeah. he just kills them when he's done with them. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty rough. <laughs> it's a pretty, it's, it's implied the, yeah, the, the sex torture is implied and not explicitly stated. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, so Marla is trying to uh, entice Vance with this crashed uh, ship of her husband. She basically wants to, to talk him into like bringing her around to find him. Uh, and, uh, and that there's going to be, and she she starts introducing him to the MacGuffin, enticing him with the MacGuffin and saying, you know, like there's going to be money and, you know, and we could share it and we could, you know, and, and she's she's implying heavily that her husband's dead. And and then and then turns on the feminine wiles and mm-hmm. starts 
playing the like, oh goodness, I just I wouldn't know how to how to handle all that wasteland all by my little old lonesome. Mm-hmm. And uh and Vance and Vance basically says, I know you're fucking with me. I know that you're trying to manipulate with me, manipulate me, but Okay, sure. And he just like, and we, and the chapter ends on him planting a big wet one on her and it startles her, uh, 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 because she's letting it happen. She's not pushing back against it and she's kind of enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, she's so we've got our, kissing him back. Exactly. Exactly. We've got our, it's kind of our eighties, nineties thing where she's got the clean cut husband at home, but she wants a bad boy. Yeah. Uh, except her husband isn't clean cut. He's just a real just piece, a piece of, of shit. shit. Yeah. Who, yeah. who nearly got the entire family killed maybe. And yeah. he, so, uh, she Your mileage may vary. Yeah, she yeah. Little, she's, she, she's a little strange. I think I think she's owed that. Yeah, you say? I, I don't I know mean, how good things were but her, but between her and uh, what's his name, uh, Zach. Zach, yeah. Which you never name your protagonist Zach. That's the one criticism I'm going to give Judge. God, yeah. <laughs> with with just a C, no H. With just a C, just a C. Yeah. Uh, so, but with so Graber, we, we love you. If if you're, well, yeah, if you're, oh, you're listening, di- it's different with you, Zach. You're different. You're Graber. You're different. You're Graber. Yeah, you're Graber. Graber. If I was yeah. writing a story with him as uh, my protagonist, and I might, yeah, I would refer to him constantly as Graber. Uh, that's just how this works, as I do in real life. So, <laughs> as as you do in real life, <sighs> dig up, stupid. And uh, so <laughs> uh, we cut to chapter six. Uh, and, and we are now fully into the Cal Roland father son dynamic here, uh, where they're cruising through the wastelands and Cal is basically playing the, like, I bet I could drive this thing. I bet I could, uh, I should have a gun. You should, you should teach me how to shoot a gun and I should be able to, yeah. I've done all this stuff in VR before. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And so, so. He and, if, and Roland at first is like absolutely not, and he and the kid says, "Come on, man! Like the, you said so yourself. Like this is I, I I'm going to die out here if I don't have some sort of protection." So he goes, "Uh, uh okay, fine." And he basically gives him the Borderlands equivalent of the wooden sword from uh, the Legend sure. of Zelda. You yeah, know, just like here you go. It's a little little gun. Uh, it's huge to him, but to, but to Roland, it's probably a little pop gun, basically. Yeah. Um. So they find this group of uh, bruisers, these bandits. They refer to them as bruisers, which I assume is what they're called, what their class is. In yeah, the game, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so they are uh, cooking up some uh, some long pig. They're having a little human flesh down there. Uh, and uh, and so uh, Roland takes Cal aside and says uh, and, and basically does the. You just do everything that I tell you to kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, like you do in your 80s and 90s movies as well. Um, so basically it cuts to and it's such a it's so funny because it, it cuts to a new scene. And what happens is just it's it's barely even a huge plan. Like basically Cal runs out there and goes, hey, boys, you know, look what I got here. <laughs> I got some fresh long pig on my butt. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just, it just, you know, and and runs and they it gets chased by one of the bandits. And as soon as he gets around a corner, uh, Roland pops out, screams where the white women at and, and blows his head off. Uh, and that's... <laughs> It's it's really not like it's it's it, I've seen I've seen episodes of Roadrunner that had more complicated uh, right. traps than this one. <laughs> but it's effective. Uh so this is no Acme Acme contraption here. Yeah, exactly. So uh let's see. So we cut to uh the rest of the bandits who have not followed him. Uh and they've got a great big like chest of uh of uh alien, what is it, iridian, iridian weapons, just which is what I was mentioning before when I said like common quote uh uh, uh right. alien technology. Um let's see. And so and so, and so I mean basically they take these guys out. Uh, uh, Cal yeah. kills a guy for the first time, uh, which <laughs> Cal killed a guy. Cal, killed, yeah, I had a trident. Uh, <laughs> I saw that. Uh, it, it basically is that. And he, Cal, you're going to want to lay low for a little. Yeah. While. 
<laughs> for as long as you're on Pandora, Cal. <laughs> uh, and, and he kills a guy and they had mentioned that these guys are crazy. And like, they pointed out that they like to lick rocks and this bandit who he shoots collapses and licks one last rock before he dies. It's such a great detail. It's so stupid. <laughs> oh my God. It's so dumb. It's fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, basic, it, it's, it's great. Uh, Roland's kind of afraid that, uh, not Roland, uh, um, Cal's kind of afraid that Roland is going to, um, uh, uh, you know, cook one of these guys up for, for dinner like they were doing. And Roland makes it clear he's not, he'd rather starve than yeah, eat then, human flesh. So, right. He's one of the good ones is uh, what we are learning. <laughs> Saint Roland. Actually, yeah. he's the Pope. If the other guy is. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. We are in Papist territory here. Uh, yeah. We also get, as Kevin mentioned before, uh, uh, Borderlands is kind of a famous game for bullet spongy enemies. Uh, and we actually get a line of dialogue that fully uh, uh, addresses that. Uh, and, and Cal describing killing uh, his first bandit. And he says, I shot one of those guys. He just didn't stop. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah, you gotta, you're gonna have to shoot him a lot as it turns out, not just one shot. So yeah. he was expecting it'd be a one and done situation. It's not the case. Yeah. Um, we're finding that Cal is kind of like, he's like going between uh, this is pretty cool. And what an adventure. And I want my mommy, yeah. uh, which is you know what? Completely understandable, to be completely uh, frank. Uh, yeah. And he's also kind of dealing with the idea that his parents are probably dead. Right. Um, he is. Uh, it, Roland has not been, uh, uh, you know, pussyfooting around that kind of scenario. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah, no, they're probably dead. So he's trying to. Uh, he's. Try I, I, I think what happens is we kind of get this moment where. Uh, he wants to cheer him up a little bit, I guess. So he like gets him on the outrunners. Like, yeah, fine. Uh, drive right. the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're, uh, yeah. What is it? Let me see. Oh yeah. So they're, they're just like cruising along and they, they, the chapter ends with, uh, basically cows learning how to write drive stick is kind of what you should have in your mind's eye. Like it's like right. a lurch, lurch, lurch kind of situation. And they run across a psycho, uh, one of the, uh, the bandits there, uh, who screams, I'm going to skin you, put on your face and say hi to your mama. And the chapter ends <laughs> with Roland blowing the psycho in half and saying, don't be talking about my mama. <laughs> And Kevin, isn't that the proper note to end this particular that section is on? The, that is the proper note to end the first third of the book on. Yeah. I, before we got started, I had read some criticisms of this book that it was, yeah. ah, it was terrible. It's worse than you imagined. Uh, I got to tell you, in terms of book action, this is... This is great. <laughs> this is fun. I mean, yeah. I can I can see some. May, maybe there will be some weird stuff coming up with Marla. Oh, uh, sure, sure. We we are tiptoeing up to some kind of fucked up stuff. Uh, yeah. at times. But, but at the same time, it is refreshing to read a book in which things happen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God, I know, right? <laughs> a book that has a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, uh presumably, at least so far. And, so far. Uh, Things happen in it, uh, yeah. and I'm and a big fan of that. It's something that I feel like – so the characters – I mean, the in Borderlands, in the book, the, a lot of these characters are monsters and rapists and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I think that sometimes – and this is kind of an issue – with general media literacy where people assign the values of the villainous characters in a novel to the author – yeah. Somehow, which is a pretty big leap to make. Yeah. yeah. And I understand when, if it's all that the story is, then yeah, it's like, come on, dude, you didn't have to fucking write this. But there is basically so, so far through one third. And we'll see if it, you know, if it, if in this two, next two thirds of the book, it's like, ugh. Um, then obviously I'll turn around and say, we've, no, you were right. Yeah, We've seen but it happen before. It's absolutely two, happened before. First yeah. third of the book so far. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, 
I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing some characters talk about doing some questionable things to the only woman that they've seen in a while. Sure. Which but these is, are not good guys. These are clearly the bad guys. And yeah. obviously centering stories and plots around sexual assault is like a thing that, you know, it's tr- it's 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 trite and cliche, but also we're not really centering the story around that quite yet. It's just yeah. things happening in the background of Marla's storyline that it's just a looming threat. So I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see how if, how I how I feel about it and how we feel about yeah. it going forward. I mean, we've we've had this happen before, where something started off really strong and 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 and, and suddenly takes a real strong turn into assholeville. And right. we're never shy about pointing that. But so far, I feel the same way. This is this is it's fun. It's high energy. It's funny, and yeah. and it's it's very appropriate for its franchise. Sure. So I'd say it's a that's a, that's what you're that's. That's a success so far. Yeah. 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 Well, okay, good. Well, now that we've uh, we've discussed that, Kevin, uh, let's get down to the important matters. Uh, what are you playing? Okay, so I have played one other game for a little bit other than my current Elden Ring playthrough. <laughs> have you, all right, real quick though, have you gotten to the DLC content for Elden Ring yet? I am, no. I am up to, well, that's the thing is I am going around and I, I can, I can do it. I can go into the DLC almost at any time because the only thing I have to do is go in and kill Moog. Uh, it basically there's a boss named Moog and once you kill him, you have access to the DLC. Okay. Like I can go to him right now, uh, with the le- the level and the spells and all that stuff that I'm at, I'm pretty sure I could go in there and and beat him up a bit. Sure. Um, but I'm going through and and doing some side questing stuff because there's some things that I never saw, I never played or finished in the first my first go round with it. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off some of these side quests that I never really saw the end nice. of. Nice. Oh, then it's uh, then it's new content time. for you. It's new content for me. So I'm yeah. like, all right, well, I'm doing the gold mask side quest. I'm doing the, I I did the Fia side quest, um, and and Rogiers and all that stuff. I'm making sure that all the the people that you find in this in your headquarters called Round Table Hold. I'm uh, kind of like doing all their stuff. I'm not sure I'm going to go through with the dung eaters side quest. Okay. Uh, because I'm very I don't uncomfort- see why not. I'm very uncomfortable with his character and his name. Oh sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I guess I can understand that point of view, yeah. <laughs> I guess. He is he is like the most disgusting character ever created in, <laughs> in one of these games. Uh but yeah, so that's Elden Ring, and otherwise I've been playing or I just started playing as a um, as a Steam Deck game, I started playing Gestalt, Steam, and Cinder, okay. which is let me make sure that's the right name. Gestalt, Steam, and Cinder. Okay, yeah. So it is. Um, I I believe that that it was like Jesse Cox worked on it. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting game. Um, uh, <laughs> it's a Metroidvania. My only issue with it so far is that it really, <sighs> it really front loads the plot. Okay. By starting with cut scenes of characters talking. Oh, does it lot. take forever to get started? It takes forever. And then I you play a little that. bit and there's some more. And it's not like cinematic cutscenes. It's just like dialogue boxes. I so I'm just like that. I, I'm just like kind of like clicking through like, yeah, OK, I kind of I'm getting the gist. Like, I'll read the uh, wiki entry, a summary of the story later, because you are thrusting me 
into a brand new world. The game mm-hmm. starts with a with a, a long cutscene, text based cutscene of like, "Here's the world you're in, and here's right. these guys, and here's these guys. They're the bad guys, but are they? Maybe I don't know. And this is the type of the magic, and this is the bad thing." that's in the world and there's this rift thing or whatever and i'm like oh my god it keeps going yeah and it's the- just still, <laughs> we, it's still we, gotta, we really gotta pack in that goddamn uh, yeah. uh, uh lore building so you get through the opening and then you start the game the basically it's like all right i'm gonna start and be like oh no there's more and yeah. then you click through some more and be like all right i'm in and then every character you talk to talks way too long to describe whatever uh, they need to like click 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 I'm like I'm the, the longer I play the more I'm losing patience for the amount of story it's trying to load off onto me and I then I'll that. do a few things and there I'll be like oh we got a cut scene with some other characters and I'm like oh my god shut the fuck up uh huh <laughs> There's, I mean, I, I I don't even know if there's voice acting or anything because I'm playing it. I'm it's it's my Steam Deck game, which is which are games that I play when I'm sitting in bed, you know, with April and we're watching you know TV at night or something like right, that. Right, right. You're just hanging out. It's just out. like I'm just like click 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 click. Okay, now I can get back to the gameplay. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what it is? It's the it's the um. It's the Pro ZD video where it's it's like, oh, I'm really enjoying this game. It's it's got really good controls that the gameplay is really fun. And then the other guy comes in and says, it's time for egg delivery. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like uh, get ready for deliver these 50 eggs. And it's mandatory. (laughs) (laughs) Such a bummer. I'm like, okay, I did it. Now I'll be back to the part, the gameplay. I'm like, now it's time to <laughs> uh, deliver more eggs. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why not? It's there if you want to see the true ending. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Otherwise you're yeah. going to get one of the four bad well, endings. Well, that's funny because it's also funny because Animal Well was basically, was literally that. And it oh, literally course. had eggs in it <laughs> where you had to find all the bonus eggs. It was the Pro ZD egg sketch. Uh, <laughs> but this is also the Pro ZD egg sketch where egg delivery is just substitute in for, oh my God, the characters are talking so much. Right. Please stop. <laughs> it's a Metroidvania. Give me the Metroidvania part. It's, yeah. I, if, presumably, you've got a shit ton of stuff to do. Like, yeah. we don't need to talk. I gotta, like, I gotta get cracking on, on veining my on Metroid eggs. or whatever, or, or, or platforming and, and whatnot. Uh, uh, let's, let's go, people. So, That's such a bummer. Uh, Gestalt Steam and, Cin- Steam and Cinder, it's currently a 7 out of 10 and will lose a point for every cutscene that I have to sit through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will, the floggings will continue until morale approves, goddammit. <laughs> uh, Phil, what are you playing? Ah, uh, I am playing uh, my, my kind of usual bullshit for the most part. Uh, I'm still playing uh, The Hunter. That that It's not a phase, Dad. Uh, that one is still going. Uh, I had a really relaxing afternoon. I just, I've been, I've been really stressed out at work and, uh, and I got in, I told my wife, I was like, I think I'm going to go hunt some turkeys. And she, and she, for a very, for, for like a split second, you saw in her eyes, she's like, you're going to, Oh, okay. Yeah. Have fun. And I, <laughs> and I set up my, like, I found my little stand that's uh, near uh, a, a known turkey hangout. And uh, and just sat there with my dog Biscuit, who's a bloodhound, and um, yeah. and just uh, waited uh, until the turkey showed up, and I got two of them, and uh, and that was that was a that was a big win for me because it was hard. You it was hard for me to kill him before. So I, you know, what's funny is I uh, I would always <laughs> whenever my dad was hunting deer, I would <laughs> when he returned, I would ask him, "Did you catch some deer?" And he he would always get so mad about me. You catch the, some deer. And he was like, I don't catch deer. I kill them. And, <laughs> and he, well, you know, eh, potato, ch- potato. 
tip, Tato. Is there? Yeah. I'm like, I'm just asking. I'm going to going to be jump scared by a deer hanging in the yeah, garage exactly. when I come home from school. <laughs> I think you know what I'm asking. You think uh, you know what so, I'm asking? Is there yeah, going to be yeah. a dead deer in the, when I open the garage door when I get home? Ex- from school? Exactly. <laughs> And I'm kind of doing what you're doing in a way, because I because uh, I mentioned a couple of episodes ago that they were like selling all of its DLC for like pennies, and I bought a bunch of it, and uh, and but and I and I, it gave me access to the dog, and I've got an ATV now, but I haven't tried any of the other parks that I could go hunting in because I'm just like I haven't I haven't bagged a moose in the starter place yet. I like so I'm still waiting to get. Uh, 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 you know, get the most out of that area before I start moving into Nepal and shit like that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but outside of that, the one that I've been playing the most uh, has been Empires of the Undergrowth, um, mm-hmm. which comes as no surprise to anyone who knows me that I I really like this game. It is a, a real time strategy ant game. Uh, You play an ant uh, hive and you start out with a few workers and a queen and you slowly like burrowing underground and popping up into the overland to find, you know, dead organisms and and stuff like that. And and, and, uh, it's it's a really interesting way that they have it. First off, I've been following Slug Disco, the, uh, the game designers who are making this. I have been following them forever for years and years because uh this was something they were developing right for a very long time and you know me i try very hard to avoid um i try to avoid uh early access games when i can sure i want to yeah, yeah, play yeah. the game when it's finished right um, exactly and this one has been in development and in early access for years and just last month it finally the 1.0 version was released and I finally said, okay, let's, let's fucking do this. And I have sunk about 20 hours into it. Uh, it's got a really interesting dynamic where what you, you have an overarching story where you are this, you're, you're, you're part of this ant hive, uh, in like a science lab, basically. And you right. can hear these scientists talking about you and, and they're, they're, they're determining different things about you and you cut out of there to do adventures with other ant tribes basically all over the world uh, to beat their challenges and that means you can come back to the ant lab and there will be more food waiting for you and more royal jelly which you can use to upgrade your ants in different ways um, right. it does a really interesting thing where you can um you know, you're an ant. You start out as just kind of your regular black ant colony, uh, but you can develop uh, uh, leaf cutter ants, and you can develop fire ants and uh, bullet ants, and all these very specialized kind of ants uh, for what you're looking for. And it's super fun. Um, I think sometimes the the objectives and the goals. There really is hardly anything that you can't overcome if you don't just take your time and sure. Zerg rush, you know, like it is it is the Zerg rush game, really. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's really pretty. Uh, it, 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 it actually will teach you shit about the different ants and insects and invertebrates you meet and come across and that sort of thing. Right. Um, it's it's really cool. It's super nerdy, and uh, I, I've been I've been kind of drowning in that game lately. It's a really good one for putting on a podcast and just chilling out. And, yeah, that's awesome. And that sort of thing. So yeah, uh, Empire of the Undergrowth. That's really the main thing that I've been playing outside of my. I'm, I'm playing a little Crypt Master. Uh, uh, still still working my way through that slowly. I like that one a lot because it's 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 very unusual and it's it's not your usual um, right stuff like it's more about riddles and wordplay and stuff like that than than just killing things. I think that's a lot of fun. So that's yeah. still a lot of fun for me. But yeah, that's me. That's that's it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Well, that'll do it for tonight's episode. Uh, if you want to uh, follow us on social media, there's a few ways you can do that. One, uh, the Patreon page is the best way to follow us. Uh, two, you can go to uh, X, Twitter, 
Twitter X, uh, uh, or you could go to Blue Sky, or you can go to Instagram. They're all at Pixelit Pod. The other way to do it is join our Discord, which you can do through our Patreon page. Uh, and let me tell you, it's a lot of fun in the Discord. We have a lot of good, fun, and lively discussions. Um, just recently, we were talking about the boys' season finale in the Discord. Nice. Uh, so, you know, hop on over to the Discord. Uh, have some fun. Actually, go, if you're a, if you're a Dota fan, uh, you should join the Discord just so VZ has somebody to talk to. <laughs> they have been getting into it lately. It's, yeah, it's been I mean, really it's, it's, it's you know just just uh, get in there and 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 have some fun. I forget uh, that that's there, and I'll, I'll get like a <laughs> notification. I'm like, why the fuck am I getting a Dota notification? Oh, got it, got it. Talk, and it's the the pay, the the channel is called Do- Talk Dota to me. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, we're 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 very clever. <laughs> That's what we're known for. <laughs> That's what we're known for. Oh yeah. Uh, but that'll do it for tonight's episode. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and have a good night, everybody. Good night.